Now exponents and powers, when I take in the form a power b, which is in the power form, this is identified to be the power. So this is understood with two basic components. One is a is called the base and b is called the exponent or the power. So this b is called the exponent. The power of the base is an exponent. So using these two concepts, we have many properties which we identify in this topic called exponents and powers. They are called instead the law of indices. So let's see what each of the law of indices says in case of this topic. The first property I identify in law of indices is when I multiply a power m into a power n, I get a power m plus n. So when the bases are same under multiplication, the powers are added. This is how I understand the first property. Next. The next law of index is when I have a power m by a power n, in division when the bases are equal, the powers are subtracted with numerator minus denominator in this form. So under division we subtract the powers, under multiplication we add the powers, provided that the bases are same. So the third property I identify is a power m whole power n is nothing but equally as a power n whole power m which is a power mn. The order of writing the powers will not affect the value which you get in the simplified form. So when I write a power m whole power n is equally understood as a power n whole power m which is nothing but a power mn. Next. The fourth property I identify here is a power 0 is always 1 with a not equal to 0. Yes. We always say that the power of a non-zero value raised to zero would be always one. So 100 power zero is one, 1000 power zero is one. So anything power zero is one except for a non-zero A. Next. When I have the basis equal, I had the powers added, but here the basis are not equal, the powers are same. So in this case, I can write this as a times of b whole power m. So I can split it separately as a power m into b power m is one of the property which we identify in law of indices. Secondly, the sixth property says that a power m by b power m under division would definitely give me a by b whole power m. We can write the whole power outside the brackets as in the case of the previous fifth law of index. In the seventh law of index, I see that a raised to negative n would always give me 1 by a power n. So this is also understood as a raised to power n is 1 by a raised to negative n, vice versa. So these properties are generally used when you have the negative power. When, when a base is raised to the negative power. So these are the law of indices which we are going to discuss in the topic called exponents and powers. Now before doing this, there is one important note which we need to identify here which says that for all these law of indices or the laws of indices, the only thing which is the restriction is A and B are not equal to zero. We don't consider zero in these cases. We consider only non-zero integers or non-zero rational numbers into consideration in case of all the seven law of indices. And the second thing what I identify is when I write any a power b or a power n or any exponent form then I understand this as a multiplied b times. This is understood as a into a into a multiplied b times. 
So for example, if I have 3 power 5, I understand this as 3 multiplied 5 times. If I have next one more example say 2 cube, this is understood as 2 multiplied 3 times which indirectly gives me the value as 8. So when we understand basis and exponents, we understand that strictly to the power form, through the power form. So a power b is understood as a into a into a till b times, which is the basic concept which we use in proving each of the indices. All these indices are proved based on this one general property of base and exponent. a power b multiplied b times each of a. So a power b is obtained when a is multiplied b times in this form these two examples being the best supporting part of it. Next. Now let's take some of the uh, example problems to consider the law of indices supporting those examples. Say for example, if I wanted to simplify Three square into three power minus three. Then in this case, I and I identified this with in comparison to the law of indices out here. Now this is similar to the first law of index which we have taken here because the bases are same. So therefore, the first law of index says that a power m into a power n is a power m plus n. That is when the bases are equal, the powers are added. Now the bases being equal, I just add the powers which are 2 and minus 3 and when simplified gives me the answer. So this is how I substitute the law, I use the law of indices to simplify certain values. Now in this case this is nothing but 3 power minus 1 which is 1 over 3 is the value for 3 square into 3 power minus 3. Same way if I have say 2 power 5 into 2 power 3. So in this case I identify the law of index number 2 which says that when the powers when the bases are equal in the ratio the powers are subtracted equally on the right which is according to the law of index 2 the second law of index. So this can be written as 2 power 5 minus 3 which gives me 2 square which indirectly gives me 4. So 4 is the value. So I get the value to be 4. So this is one of the examples supporting the second law of index. So let's take the third example which supports the third law of index.